Okay guys, so in this video, I'm gonna go over my genetic predispositions as I learned from 23andMe. Um, 23andMe doesn't really tell you a whole lot about your risk factors, but what's cool is it stores a large part of your genome, so you can kind of look up uh, whatever things you're predisposed to by looking at your genes individually. You can search for these. So it stores all that data, which is pretty cool. Now, you can also uh, pay for a service that like Leo offers from Leo and Longevity, where he did it for me, he did a, a cardiovascular risk assessment, which is like an eight-page document where he breaks down some of the most important genes related to cardiovascular health. And this is where I found out that I basically have terrible heart genetics. And I don't have genetics where I can get away with doing a lot of detrimental things. Because you always hear about these people who live to be like 100 or even 90, and they smoke for 50 years, or they're alcoholics or they take a bunch of drugs and they still live that long or they eat terrible and like all these things that you were like, how does that make sense? Well, they have a lot of these longevity genes and they have a lot of uh, positive cardiovascular genes and things like that. That's, that's what most of that is. Whereas someone like myself, I can't get away with these things. So even the fact that I took anabolic steroids for nine years does not bode well for me. Um, I've looked into my health extensively. I feel good about, you know, about my health overall. And the body can bounce back a lot better in the twenty in your twenties. So, fortunately, I kind of got this uh, reckless streak out of the way in my twenties when I can still kind of recover. So it's just interesting though, and I'll, I'll dive into this a little more. You'll see, the, you'll see coming up here what I'm talking about. But um, yeah, basically, I did a very in-depth analysis um, as from Leo. He provides that service, and you can hire him for it. And I found a lot of things out where. I have just, I'm predisposed to uh, coronary artery disease, cardiovascular disease, high blood pressure, um, high LDL cholesterol, um, strokes, heart attacks. I'm predisposed to all that at like a two to three times greater risk than the normal person. So it's just like, I cannot get away with this stuff. And my grand grandfather on my mother's side, he passed away in his 60s from a heart attack. And I think a few of my other relatives have had uh, heart disease, so it's it's no joke here. Um, and I, you know, honestly, I wish I found this stuff out years ago before I got on anabolics, because that definitely would have changed my approach. And I've, I had high blood pressure for nine years straight while I was doing this. I wasn't running any uh, blood pressure medication, no ARB or anything like that. Whereas now, I run 40 milligrams of telmisartan. I'm really I'm gonna bump it up to 80 because even 40 is not quite enough. My my natural blood pressure is about 140 over 90. That's on no anabolics, just natural supplements, and I'm 100 kilos right now, 220 pounds. So my natural blood pressure just by itself is 140 over 90. Um, and there's some ties towards uh, anabolic steroid use, raising your diastolic blood pressure permanently, which is the second number. That could be the case. I don't really know. But yeah, so basically, I also. Uh, I just found out a whole lot of stuff where I'm like, wow, I can't get away with a, a bunch of poor life choices. The one positive thing is I've looked into my uh, cancer-specific genes, and I have a very uh, cancer-protective gene profile. So although I'm predisposed to a million heart conditions, and you know, I, if I didn't start taking this stuff seriously and, and keeping my blood pressure and cholesterol in check and all these things, um, I'd probably be at a very severe risk of a uh, heart attack or something in my 50s or 60s but and that's not to say it won't happen still but i'm, I'm definitely going to keep uh, a closer eye on things but at least i'm fortunate enough to uh have very cancer protective genes so cancer has not run in my family at all i don't really know anybody who's had cancer in my family and uh so i'm fortunate there that's at least one positive we can take away from this but i'm going to dive into the video here guys and um one other thing I should say, I, I don't have any longevity genes. So there's certain genes like FOXO3. I think it's, it's very confusing, but there's, I believe there's 50, around 50 FOXO3 SNPs, uh, single nucleotide polymorphisms in the body. And there's specific SNPs that code for longevity that are found in people who live to be 100 and stuff. I don't have any of these genes. That's just one example. There's other longevity genes. I don't really have any of them. So... I got my work cut out for me if I want to live a long life, basically. Some people have these longevity genes, they can get away with stuff. So it's just interesting. I'll, uh, I'll show you here coming up on my 23andMe what it looks like 
But uh, I found a bunch of other stuff out from Leo far beyond the 23andMe, which is where the real value is in getting 23andMe. You got all these, you know, you got your genome stored on here, so you can look up individual genes. Um, if you can find a service where where you can dive in deeper and learn how to do this, so that's really cool. But I'll break it down here in a sec. Um, appreciate you guys watching the video, and here we go. Okay, guys. So let's dive into this. So this is the health predisposition report from 23andMe. So here, I believe this is the the alpha one antitrypsin deficiency. I believe that is a, a variant for hearing impairment. Let's click on this. So I have one of the two genetic variants for, oh no, this is the one for liver. So it says you are not likely at risk of developing lung or liver disease related to AAT deficiency based on your genetic result. However, if you smoke, you, have a may, have, you may have a slightly increased risk of developing lung disease. So that's the interesting thing with this stuff, guys. It's uh, You find out some variants and stuff that you have. I, I read something where if I were to uh, smoke i'd have a much greater chance of like lung cancer and things like that than most people now i do not smoke i've never smoked so that's fortunate this one's the big one so alzheimer's runs in my family my grandmother passed away from it she developed it in her mid 60s which is when it would typically happen and so i'm at it says i'm at a slightly increased risk for late onset alzheimer's disease now the problem here is basically there's a gene called the apoe4 gene which codes it's found it's the most tied gene to Alzheimer's out of all the genes. So everybody has two alleles, one from their mother, one from their father of the APOE gene. And I have one APOE3 gene and one APOE4 gene. So having one APOE4 gene gives me a 30% higher chance of getting Alzheimer's basically. Whereas uh, if you have two copies of of the APOE4 gene, you are at about a 60 to 65% greater chance of getting Alzheimer's disease. So it's 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 very, it's not a good gene at all. This is a gene you do not want at all. Um, the other bad thing about this gene is the APOE4 gene means your body basically is hyper responsive to dietary cholesterol and saturated fat intake. So whereas most people, uh, dietary cholesterol and things like that won't necessarily affect their cholesterol, their blood cholesterol levels, for me it will. So I hyperabsorb uh, dietary cholesterol and saturated fat, which, you know, this is fascinating because honestly, uh, when I was doing, I've done everything right. I've taken all the supplements. I've had my diet perfect at various times and I could never get my LDL cholesterol, which is the bad cholesterol below 120. 120, it just always seems to hover around there. Even when everything is dialed in and I'm doing cardio on a daily basis, an hour a day, I'm eating perfect. I'm taking all these health supplements. And I'm still at 120 LDL, and I could never figure out why, whereas I'd see other people do these things, and they would be in the 70s or 80s. It's because of this gene, this APOE4 gene, that plays a large role in it. I also have other genes. I'm not going to get into them. That's stuff you can find out with Leo if you have that or not. But I have two copies of the worst genes as far as like how responsive my, my receptors are to LDL cholesterol. So it's just interesting. That's just one example. But... You do not want the APOE4 gene. That's just one of the genes that is quite bad. I don't have protective heart genetics, and I have uh, detrimental heart genetics. So it's just the, the the deck is stacked against me with some of these genes here where I just can't get away with stuff. Look at this one then. Type 2 diabetes, increased likelihood, you say. Okay, well, increased likelihood, what does that mean? Well, this one was actually fascinating. I had no idea. My grandfather had diabetes. It says I am at a 52% chance of developing type 2 diabetes between the ages of 29 and 80. That's amazing. So I have a very increased risk of developing type 2 diabetes, which my glucose, my fasting glucose has always been around 88. And this is just something I got to keep an eye on. I do like sugar at times, ice cream and such. So perhaps I have to be more careful about this. So you guys can already see my genes are not good from a health standpoint. Um, it's just I got to be much more careful about this. So uh, Burka, Burka is actually a cancer-related gene. Um, the Burka genes are, are cancer protective or cancer detrimental, depending on what you have. And I also went, I did a deep dive into my APOL1 genes for chronic kidney disease and to see how my kidneys are. I have very good kidney 
health genetics. So very good cancer specific genetics and very good kidney health genetics, which is good. And you'll see some of the other stuff listed here. Um, carrier status for certain things. There's nothing besides this one is for hearing loss. So my grandfather had hearing issues. That makes sense. But really nothing else cropped up here. Now some of the, this is interesting, the wellness portion. You guys may see this. I went through all these and these are all like dead accurate. So I like to consume more caffeine. I don't sleep very deeply. I'm a light sleeper. I'll wake up easily. Way above average. Makes sense. Well, lactose intolerant. I'm likely tolerant. Muscle composition. So this one's kind of interesting. Common in elite power athletes. Some of you might find this interesting. Um, if it loads here. Okay, let's see what we got here. Studies have found that almost all elite power athletes have a specific genetic variant in a gene related to muscle composition. You have the same genetic, genetic variant as these athletes. Now, Leo also had some more um, gene specific to fast twitch muscle fibers on his analysis, and I also possess those. So the fascinating thing here is I possess a few genes for fast twitch muscle fibers, which makes sense why I'm semi-decent at powerlifting. And I think like for these genes, where I, I possess one allele, one of the two alleles for these fast twitch fibers and these, uh, you know, what you want for powerlifting and for sprinting and stuff. My guess is a guy like Larry Wheels probably possesses both copies of these alleles in these certain genes. So that the true genetic freaks, the Ashton Ruskas, the Larry Wheels, John Hacks, they might have two two copies of these genes. Whereas I've got like one of these, these copies and a couple of these genes. So that's kind of interesting. So you can see here that they kind of dive into things for you. Um, not too much else I want to cover, but you can basically see why I'm like very hesitant to get back on anabolic steroids, even at mild stuff. My strength is blowing up right now. So I'm kind of like, my strength is going through the roof. I'm healthier than I've ever been. I'm, I'm always getting healthier, working on things more and more. Um, and I have these terrible heart genetics. So like why it probably is not a good idea for me to get back on anabolic steroids at any point. And that's when I kind of like made the decision. I'm like, I should probably be much more careful about this stuff. Because, you know, I want to live to be like 80. I don't know if I have the genetics to live past that, but I think 80 would be a nice goal. So, you know, we'll see. But uh, that pretty much wraps up the video, guys. I'll keep some more videos coming. I got, I got plenty of interesting topics. Let me know what you guys think about the thumbnail. And uh, if you're interested in coaching, shoot me an email at prstrength1 at gmail.com. I'll put that link in the description. Appreciate you guys watching and following along as always. Um, have a great Memorial Day. And thank you. I'm out.